Recently, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, said that with their investment in AI, they were proud that they made Google Dance. And on the 10th of May, there was Google I.O., their major annual conference. So everybody was expecting big things from Google. And indeed, Google started to dance. They announced so many things that they're not just dancing, they're actually twerking. In this video, we will see what Google announced in terms of AI, a term that was probably used a billion times during this conference. AI, 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 AI. And there were many gimmick announcements, so little things here and there that seem nice but are not very important, but there were also very impactful announcements. So let's try to figure out the most interesting ones. Obviously, as expected, the generative AI will be integrated in most Google tools for both individuals and businesses. And so let's take a look at all the front end news first. Those things that people like you and me uh, will probably be using in the very near future. One of them is called Help Me Write in Gmail. And as the title says, it's an AI that will be integrated inside Gmail interface and that will help you compose your emails faster. So instead of writing the email yourself, you will just tell Gmail what kind of email you want to write. Which is amazing, of course, because that's one more step uh, towards humans completely unlearning how to write or do anything by themselves from their own brain. And I even wonder, why do we need to log in in our email apps at all? We can just let AI decide what to answer and basically handle everything in the background for us, right? But there you have it. And of course, uh, there will be artificial intelligence inside Google Docs and Google Workspace to generate sheets and presentations based on your data and also on external data, just like with Microsoft Copilot, as I explained in my previous video. So this is exactly the same approach. It's a direct answer to Microsoft Copilot. There will be AI in all the work tools that are created by Google. But the most important, of course, is what is Google doing in terms of search? This is their biggest source of revenue, and it's also the one that is at the highest risk of uh, disruption because of conversational AI. And Google, they know this. So just like Bing Chat, uh, they will integrate a conversational AI on top of their search results. Basically, when you will search for anything at all, you will have your traditional results but on top of them, you will have a conversational box. And since Google has the advantage of the name and recognition, if they deliver good results in terms of this conversational search, then they will definitely uh, retain their position. And so here there are very interesting things. For example, they showcased conversational shopping search. So when you want to buy something, you will go on Google and instead of just typing a keyword, for example, e-bike, if you're looking to buy an e-bike, you can type something more elaborate. I want an e-bike that is specifically good for this type of terrain, uh, which has uh, this range, and maybe which is of that specific color. And so then the AI-powered shopping will show you exactly uh, what you're looking for. And if this works out, uh, this will be a very practical uh, result for AI in terms of monetization. Because running AI models costs a lot, a lot of money. And if Google does this well, here they have a very clear monetization possibility. You will also be able to compare two products. For example, you will tell Google, I'm thinking about buying this and that. And so then you see two products and you will ask Google uh, to compare it in a conversational way. For example, two e-bikes or two restaurant places. Basically, we will have an overall much more interactive and conversational search and shopping experience, which sounds very, very good. So let's see the result once it will be deployed. By the way, if you are in the US, you can ask to join the waitlist to try out all this beta stuff. Then Google also announced some other uh, interesting things for users like the Magic Editor. Uh, this will basically allow you to edit your photos using AI. Things like moving and erasing objects from a photo, changing the lighting, and so on. So, supposedly this feature will be released uh, later this year, 
and we'll see how well it works. Obviously, the demonstration is always amazing, but if this indeed works out, it's a very big threat to the typical photo editing software. Then there's also the universal translator for videos. This is when you have a video in one language and you apply this AI to translate that video into any other language. And so there's a person talking there and this AI will add an audio in a different language using the voice of that person and it will also perfectly lip sync to it. So they demonstrated this model and it's quite obvious when you see this working like this that very likely it will be integrated into Udo. That would make the most sense. So you will be able to watch videos in any language as if they were originally recorded in that language. And also I would guess that if such a feature is indeed integrated into YouTube, uh, then it will be available for premium subscribers only, which will make more sense to pay for YouTube premium then. But these are just my own speculations. Finally, something very interesting and useful that they announced is the watermark tagging of AI content. So whenever uh, there will be an AI generated image or anything else, uh, Google will be able to apply a permanent watermark on it so that people know that it's AI. And this is super important to do in this world because AI generated content already became unrecognizable from the real one. So it will be extremely useful to separate, to let people know what is AI generated, what is synthetic and what is a real, a real photo. And continuing on this, uh, they will also add a feature to search images backwards. So for example, let's say you have an image, you will be able to trace back where else uh, this image was published or maybe even where it originated from. So that way you have all this traceability and same for its metadata. So generally all of this will help fight AI generated misinformation, hopefully. This is something that other companies didn't talk about, only Google did. And honestly, this is really cool and I think this is extremely useful. It's critical. Now let's take a look at all the back end. So all these complex technical things that the users won't see, but the developers or businesses will be working with. And here there are many, many interesting announcements as well. First of all, the new Palm 2 LLM. So this new language model is, well, more powerful uh, than the previous one. It will be particularly good at code and math. So unlike ChatGPT, for example, because ChatGPT can't do math. And the reason for that is that it was trained on scientific data, lots and lots of scientific data. And also it was trained on 20 programming languages. So this is their new model and it will now be integrated into BARD. So BARD should become more powerful and should deliver better results. By the way, BARD is also now linked to Adobe Firefly for image generation. So coming back to Palm 2, it will be particularly good when it will be fine tuned for specific needs. For example, medicine or cyber security. So here Google announced Med Palm 2 a model specifically trained on medical data, and it already showed incredible results. It can interpret medical shots, results, and give a lot of recommendations to physicians, which will definitely improve their work. So there will be several sizes of this Palm 2 models, and they will be accessible through Google AI Cloud for those who want to try them out. And this is very important. So Google cannot screw this one up. So if their AI output is still not as good as ChatGPT, people will really start to lose confidence in their ability to compete. So there are a lot of expectations in terms of the power of uh, their models. And supposedly Palm 2 should be an answer good enough. And that's something that we will see literally in the coming weeks. But they also announced that they are working on Gemini. And this is a completely new foundational model that will compete directly with ChatGPT. So the idea is to be more powerful and multimodal with capabilities supposedly never seen before, like memory and planning. This is something that ChatGPT can't do, for example. So this is a big, big announcement. And Google says that the results that they are already seeing with this Gemini model internally are incredible. But this is something that we will not get to test it or to use it 
before uh, probably a long time. So this is not a definitive list. Uh, there were a lot of gimmicky announcements such as immersive uh, 3D uh, navigation, a new phone by Google, which is foldable and whatnot. Many, many things like this. But I tried in this video to really condense those announcements into the most interesting ones. So definitely Google is dancing. That's what we're seeing now. Uh, Google is responding and Google is fully in the AI race. And I just hope that there will be less announcements and more actual releases of things that we, the users, can try and test on our own. If you like this video, please give it a like and also let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. I would really love to hear your opinion. See you soon.